pencil and paper. So, I'm going to talk to the parents just for a second, but a lot of you in the audience today are parents, you have parents, were parents, could be parents, but as parents, we want the best for our children in their education and their jobs, right? Say yes. yes. And we try to give them advice, we try to give them information, we give them suggestions, we are trying to help guide them on what they need to be doing, right? I mean, we've been through it. We've experienced life. We know some of the things that work. We know some of the things that don't work. You know, going down, you know, a kid putting your hand on a hot stove, we teach them not to do that. Why? Because as parents, somewhere along the line, we had learned that wasn't a good thing to do, so we try to teach the children not to do that. We teach the children not to drive fast. We teach them not to text while they're driving, although they're watching us text while we drive. <laughs> Don't do that. Okay? So, when your kids ask your advice, and when they seek your counsel, and you're giving them this information, and they start to ignore it, and they're not listening, or they're going off in their own direction, moms and dads, how does that make you guys feel? Bad, right? Makes you nuts. Makes you absolutely nuts. You're, ha you're not happy with them. You're pretty frustrated, right? So, I'm not your parent. I'm not your dad. I'm certainly not your mom. <laughs> However, you have come to us for some guidance. You have come to us to say, help me. Teach me. You've done this in the past. Hundreds, maybe thousands of people have been guided along in the 40 years or so I've been doing this, either touching people directly or indirectly in the system, in the guidance, when I was coaching for Mike, when I was coaching the coaches, whether I was coaching you individually, or collectively, whether I coach our coaches, whether you see it on a video or a YouTube, or we have a conversation sitting down and we're just eating lunch together over here. We have these conversations and you're here seeking some information and some advice. Maybe our program and our systems could help you too. This is what you're thinking. Or at least I hope that's what you're thinking. So when we line it out for you, and we put it on paper, and we discuss the whole thing in detail, and we work with you to make up your schedule, set your time in place, put all the pieces together in your time management logs, help you with your scripts, your dialogues, overcoming the objections, working on some strategies. And you don't listen. And you do it your way. I won't ask you how that makes me feel. Because it drives me nuts. Think about it. As a parent, wouldn't that drive you nuts? Well, as an educator, as an awakener, it drives me nuts. See, I don't think of myself quite as a teacher. I think of it more as an awakener. Okay? All I can do is a, help you see it, get it, put you on the path, and then the rest of it really is up to you. Right? Say yes. yes. So, I wrote down here a question. How much of what we line out for you? How much of what we suggest for you? How much of what we put in the paperwork for you do you do on a daily, weekly basis? Don't answer it. Just write it down. 
Now, I want to do a little bit of a reality check. Um, to make sure in life, if I'm supposed to be kind of the parent image, if you will, the dad, if you will, let's do a reality check about what's expected of you in life to provide for you and your families. So I wrote down here, here's some questions, you guys can write these down, see how you're doing with them. I wrote down, do you have a home? Is it on track to be paid off? Does it have equity? Do you have life insurance? You that have children, do you have life insurance, and if so, how much? And then let me throw a thought at you. If you don't survive, God forbid there's a catastrophe and you die, who's going to take care of your kids? Who's responsible for taking care of the physicalness of the children? Maybe that you've got figured out. But how about the financial obligations of the children? So you say to me, yeah, but Neil, I bought some life insurance. I've got 500,000 or I've got a million dollars of life insurance. You know, I'm, I'm pretty covered here. Okay, I appreciate that. Let's talk about it. So let's say you earn, I don't know, 80, 100,000, 125, whatever it is you earn. Say you were in that, and you have a million dollars in life insurance. Okay, everybody with me? So you pass away. The million dollars comes to your family. Now, you're not there anymore, so the in, your income has to be replaced. So how much do you earn on a million dollars in interest? Anybody? Maybe 4%. 3 to 4 percent over time. So on a million dollars, that's 30 to 40,000. Now you were making a hundred. And maybe your spouse was working in the, in the workplace and maybe they weren't. But now, that million dollars that you thought was such a great amount of money isn't throwing off anything for you. I guess you could take the million dollars and buy an apartment building and probably throw off a few more dollars than that. But then you have to worry about vacancies, et cetera, et cetera. I'm talking about being very conservative right now. You see, we have to talk about reality. We have to talk about taking care of that. Now, you need to earn money in order to pay that bill, right? Say yes. But that's the reality of what's going on. So if you're not there and the insurance doesn't cover it and your spouse has to go out and work then your kids who were taken care of by your spouse are now having to be taken care of by someone else is that what you want? is that what you want for your family? I don't think so I certainly don't so I wrote down here do you have health insurance? What? Do you have health insurance? You know, one of the things that I have a problem with in this mandatory health insurance thing that we're talking about is I know people that don't buy health insurance because they want a nicer, fancier car. We laugh, but that's the truth. They choose not to take care of their family and their obligations because they want a nicer family car. I've made the decision to cover those things. Make sure I have health insurance. Make sure I have life insurance. Make sure I have long-term insurance. Make sure I have all the coverages, the liability insurance that covers all of this thing. You know, we're looking at stuff all the time because you don't know what's coming. You've got to be concerned about that. I wrote down here, do you have long-term health insurance? When you get old, who's going to take care of you? And is there enough money to do that? 
I wrote down here, how much will it cost you to send each kid to college? Let me tell you something, right now, when I graduated high school, back in the Stone Ages, all you really needed was a high school education to get a decent job. If you had a college education, you got a really nice job. Today, if you don't have a college education, it's tough to even get an interview. It's tough to get an interview without a college education. Doesn't matter what you graduated in, they just want to make sure they're looking at the college graduation, the college diploma, similar to when I graduated, they were looking at the high school diploma. The state schools, even the state of California schools are expensive to send your kids to. It's huge. I wrote down here, are your federal and state taxes current? Do you pay your quarterlies? Do you have money set aside for emergencies? Cars break down, even new ones. I had a brand new car. Brand new car. Brand new. I didn't have 500 miles on this car and I rode over a pothole on the way to the office and broke the tire. It's not covered. It cost me 600 bucks for that tire. $600, and the wheel was fine, thank goodness. Stuff happens even to a brand new car that you can't anticipate. You've got to have the money to be able to cover it. I wrote down here, you have money set aside to pay three months expenses for an emergency, or if your, your spouse is ill and you need to help take care of them. And I wrote down here, how's your credit? Can you get a loan if you needed one? If your back was against the wall and you needed to borrow some money to take care of some emergency, could you get one? Are you working on cleaning that up? And then I wrote down here, sometimes we think that there's a family member that might be able to jump in and help us out. Let me tell you something. Most of the family members I know are not in that good of shape anymore. Okay? The economy hit them just as hard as it hit us. So the person you were looking at that was going to be maybe able to help you out and throw you some money if you needed it, that backstop might not be there. So I wrote down here, okay, so what's Neil doing to me? He's talking all this negativity. It's all this kind of stuff. This is not what I came into the office to hear this morning. No, maybe not. But you need to hear it. Because if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, when you're supposed to be doing it, you better start looking back at this. Because this is your job. This is what you're supposed to do. Can it be over <clears throat> overwhelming? Yeah. It can be, but you need to do it. I wrote down here, this is life. You can stay at home and you can blame the economy. Oh, this economy is terrible. I can't believe it. You know, they let me borrow $500,000 and I really couldn't afford to pay them back, but they let me borrow it. They let you borrow it? What's the matter? You couldn't say no? You couldn't say, I can't afford that? They let you make the loan? They made it too easy? Hey, let me tell you something. I was in that market too. I could have borrowed millions of dollars more than we did and I said, no, that's not gonna happen. Because as the market goes up, what happens? The market goes down. And when the market's down, ladies and gentlemen, the good news is the market will go back up. You've got to be conservative with this. You've got to think about it. I wrote down here, you can blame Congress. You can blame your president. You can even blame me. It could be me. I don't provide enough pencils. I don't know. Something. That's my fault. You could blame your spouse. You could blame bad luck, or you could take action. You could take action. I wrote down here, 
wherever you are now doesn't mean you have to stay there. But you need to take inventory of where you are right now. How's my credit? How's my house? How are we on paying for the kids' school? Where are we on the different programs? Is my insurance up to date? Do I have enough insurance on the things that need to be done? God forbid something happens to me. Are my children taken care of? I have to tell you something. If you don't have enough insurance to cover your kids, then you need to be careful about what you do until you earn more money to be able to buy more insurance, right? Say yes. So next time you decide you want to text while you're driving, you could die from texting. And then that causes this whole problem. Get it? Simply don't text. There's another reason for not texting. Um, I wrote down a question. Why don't you why don't you do what you know you're supposed to do? Why don't we do this? Why don't we do what we know? We know. Look, we get it. I didn't line out anything earlier that you don't get and understand. Right? Say yes. Yes. Okay. So, I wrote down here, the reason we don't do it is because we think we have options. We think we have options. We think, okay, let's talk about some of the options. We have a rich relative that's going to leave us money. Okay? Check that off if you got one of those. All right? Um, that big deal, I'm going to do a big, giant, million, two million, three million dollar deal, which is going to give me 60, 70, 80, 90 thousand dollars worth of money. It's going to put me back on track. Yahoo! I got one of those coming up. We think that's coming. We think we can win the lottery. Write that down. Okay, because actually that is a retirement program for some people. <laughs> a weekly ticket for the lottery. That's their retirement program. Every week they buy a lottery ticket. Okay? Then I wrote down here they get a job back at what they used to do, a real job. Now here's what I think. I think of all of those things, that's the one that's in the back of your head that you think, maybe not all of you, but you, some of you think, you know, if this doesn't work out so well, I could get a job, I could go do something else. I could make a living. So, here's what I, I want to do. For those of you, don't raise your hand, but if you're one of those people, I want to give you next week off. And I encourage you, to go look for a job. Fix your resume up. Go out and door knock jobs. Go on monster.com. Go on all the different websites. Go talk to anybody you have to talk to. Take the entire week and go find a job that's paying you as much if not more than you're making now or the potential for more than you're making now. Now remember also look at the hours you're spending now, working, versus the hours you're going to be spending there. There they want you to work a 40 plus hour work week, right? Say yes. yes. Here we want you to work a 40 plus hour work week, but you don't. Okay? <laughs> Alright? It's a big difference there. So we, we need to look at that. So I, what I did was, I did a little bit of job research. All right, this weekend, for those of you that don't want to take the week off, I did some job research. Okay, so if you want to be a paralegal, if any of you have any of those skills to be a paralegal, you could go out and be a paralegal, what they call paralegal one, which does require two years experience in the field or related field, and you can earn somewhere between forty and $50,000 for that one, okay? So we've got that one, all right? Then how about teacher salaries, okay? Teacher salaries. So a teacher's aid, which requires, you not have a felony, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Okay. And not on a, one of those lists, Megan's list, one of those things. <laughs> well, look, I'm just telling you what it says. All right, I'm just, I'm reporting now. I'm reporting. So it says here, you want to be a teacher's aide, you could make all the way up to $20,000. Wow. Yeah. yeah, right there, 20 grand. And, wait, a daycare center teacher, probably a step above, I guess, that goes up to... $28,000. All right? So, and anybody, you know, you're welcome to these. <laughs> How about a programmer? Some of you, like, are computer literate. You can do different things with computers, etc. That's a little bit better. You need three years' experience in the field or related areas, and you can earn anywhere from fifty dollars to $60,000 there. Um, I even got a little creative here and said, how much do beggars make? You know, I figured, you know, these guys that you get on and off the free, well, come on. Uh, we, I, you, we gotta consider all the options, right? So these guys and gals that you see going on and off the freeway, they're making some dough. So they did a study. It's right here. There's like a study on it. All right, so how much do beggars make? And, okay, it's true, this is a couple of years old, so this is, might be up a little, or it might be down. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, it says here that it varies a few dollars from uh, $20 a day to $50 a day would be the mid-range, mid and on the very high end, occasionally, somebody does hit a $300 day. But if you, you, yeah, yeah. But if you use, no, no, it's, whoa! Oh, well, there goes the staff. Okay, so if we use the medium $50 a day, um, you're looking at anywhere from thirteen to eighteen thousand dollars a year in income. Okay, it's cash only. You're not going to probably report it, so it'll probably have the buying power of somewhere around twenty twenty two thousand dollars. But it's an. I just want you to know, it's an option. See, you think you have options, and I'm agreeing with you. You have options. And then I and th and then I looked in the Times this weekend, and. Um, I highlighted two jobs. School bus driver, Los Angeles Times, six to eight hour routes available. Starting pay for certified school bus drivers. Certified means you have to go get a license and you have to kind of you pass a DMV test and, and yeah. May, and the Megan law applies. <laughs> go figure. Okay. 15 to 75, 15 to 17 dollars an hour. There you go. There you go. Oh, then there's one, one more. Maintenance. For those of you that are kind of good with your hands. Here's one here. Fuller part-time apartments in Santa Monica. So you got to drive to Santa Monica. All right. So you got to go cross town. Costs a lot of money and gas. Uh, but that actually starting salary is 29 to 10. 29 to 10. But you got to know how to unstop toilets and do plumbing stuff and, and those kinds of things. So, so you do have options. You do have options. I wrote down here Today matters. Today, 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 today matters. We have the plan. The MAP program is there. I'll fax again to you. I'll email another one to you. We'll make a copy with you. I'll actually sit down, or Frank will sit down, or Bill will sit down, and we'll read each line with you, okay? Each line. Go over each line again and line out the program. But it's a simple, basic program. I wrote down here, agents that work the plan are succeeding and at a really high level, even in this market. You know, 
Right now, in our company, we have 72 agents that have either earned more so far this year or are on track to earn more than last year, partially because of this, but nowhere near what I believe they're capable of doing because nobody's working the program even at a 60% clip. No one. But think about it. Just imagine if you were working at a 50, 60, 70% clip on this program. If you're not doing the plan, start today. Today matters. If you're doing part of the plan, step it up. Kick it in gear. Put some fire on this thing. Supercharge it. We've got from October to December 31st, we're running through the finish line. Yeah, we'll have an end of contest party. Yeah, we're having an end of contest contest. We're going to have some fun through this. We're going to have some prizes. We're going to enjoy ourselves. We're going to be able to start working on the things that we need to do to ensure a great life for us and for our families. And we need to look at all the different levels and areas of responsibility and do our own personal reality check and make sure we're doing those things for ourselves, for our families, for our futures. If you're not going to work the plan, and you're not going to do the things that need to be done, I am going to request that you leave. And I'm going to tell you what, I actually want you to leave the business because you're screwing it up for everybody else. Can I tell you how? If you haven't worked on your script, and you don't know what to say and how to say it, and you're calling an expired, along with the other... See, there's of the 50 people that it called expireds this morning already, Eight of them know what to do, how to say it, and what to say at a really high level. The other 35 are just doing it because Neil said to do it. But I didn't learn, but I also told you to learn your scripts and dialogues, right? Say yes. yes. But you're calling anyway. So all you're doing is pissing the client off. Stop it. Get out of there. If you're going to do this, get serious and do it. Get in action. Make it happen or get off the playing field. You're just upsetting the clients and getting in the way of the serious agents and the serious sellers. Do you guys get this? Does this make any sense at all? I saw a sign yesterday. It was Marine Corps driving on the freeway. It says, we're not looking for applicants. We're looking for commitments. We're not looking for applicants to the Marine Corps. They're looking for commitments. Anybody of you been in the Marine Corps or know somebody in the Marine Corps, that's a committed group of men and women that are focused on what needs to be done. That's how this job has to be taken. We need to take it seriously. Life is serious. You have to be prepared for the different things that are going to come up. Don't be comfortable with what you have. You know, since the economy's come down a little bit, in most cases, we're all living on less and getting used to it. Living on less and it getting used to it, which means it's okay with you. Well, it's not okay with me. I don't like it, and I hope you don't like it, because the opportunities are out there. It's a simple job. You do what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it, meaning learning the scripts, learning the dialogues, learning them at a high level, practice, drill, and rehearse. Go out and, pr and prospect. Do the things that you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it. Simple. I don't ask you to work seven-day weeks. The program isn't set up that way. It's a five, five-and-a-half-day-week program. 
It's an eight to 10 hour a day program. I get it, some of you have kids, you need to modify the program. I understand that. But modify the program doesn't mean dilute it. Doesn't mean don't do it. It means do what you're supposed to do.